We're smuggling cargo and riding the trade winds. That's right, it's Ahoy from Leader Games. In this asymmetric swashbuckling strategy game, two to four players take on the role of sea-bound factions, each vying for the most fame on the high seas. Through a series of rounds, two factions, the Bluefin Squadron and the Mollusk Union, each compete for dominance on the various regions of the game map. Meanwhile, a pair of smugglers steal and deliver cargo to various islands, increasing the wealth of those islands and earning fame for themselves. Once a player reaches 30 fame points, the player with the most fame wins. Setup begins with a player count. Depending on the number of players in the game, different factions might be available for selection. In a two-player game, just the Bluefin Squadron and the Mollusk Union are available. For three players, add in a smuggler, and for four players, add in an additional smuggler. Players of each faction will sit around the game table depending on their place in the turn order. Going clockwise, the Bluefin Squadron, a smuggler, the Mollusk Union, and the other smuggler. Note that the smugglers are identical, so it doesn't matter who goes where. If there's a smuggler's dispute, make them roll for either second or fourth seat. Each player starts with their faction board in their play area. Place the fame tracker within reach of all players. For each player in the game, place a fame marker on the zero space of the fame track. Set up the region stack by shuffling the 12 region tiles and returning one face down to the box. Set the remaining tiles face down in a stack nearby. Then draw two region tiles face up on the table to form the map. Region tiles are divided into four spaces. Align the two so only one space connects the regions to one another, ensuring their islands are as far away from each other as possible. Then place a wealth die with the one side face up into the center of each region tile and set the remaining dice in a supply nearby along with the battle dice, gold tokens, and damage tokens. Next, take the market cards. If you're playing a two or three player game, first remove one random market card from each of the six suits noted on their top left corner. In a four player game, just leave the deck complete. In either case, give it a shuffle and place the cards in a face-down draw deck near the score track. Draw and reveal three cards to form the market row. Next, players set up their factions. First, the players take their action dice and give them a roll. Note that all players have four action dice except the Bluefin Squadron, which has five. Players set their rolls near their board and each take one gold token. Then each player sets up their faction. The Bluefin Squadron takes their patrol figures, stronghold figures, aid cards, and the first player card. They place their flagship and one patrol figure on one of the island spaces on the map. The first smuggler, if they're in the game, takes their aid card and two pledge markers with their squadron and union icons face down. They set their black and white reward markers on the middle space of the rewards grid and place their flagship on any non-island space on the map. The Mollusk Union takes their cutter, gunship, and comrade tokens, six of which go on the ready comrades section of their board. They place their flagship and two comrade tokens on the non-occupied island of the map. They then shuffle their 12 plan cards into a face down deck and draw two plan cards into their starting hand, keeping them private. The second smuggler, if in the game, will set up just like the first. The gameplay occurs in rounds, each divided into a set of player turns, starting with the holder of the first player card and proceeding clockwise. On a player's turn, they may take a variety of actions, most of which are triggered through the placement of a rolled die into a matching die slot on their board. On their turn, a player must place exactly two action dice, one at a time, triggering actions. The Bluefin Squadron player will have a bonus turn with one die since they have five dice total. Actions must be taken one at a time and completed before a new action can begin. We'll look at some of the actions shortly. 
Once a player has resolved both actions, their turn ends and play proceeds clockwise, with players taking turns until they run out of dice, at which point the round ends. At the end of a round, the Bluefin Squadron and the Mollusk Union compete for control of the regions, earning fame if they dominate an area. These two players compare their control score on that region tile, whomever scores higher gains fame. The Bluefin Squadron scores one control point per patrol, two per stronghold, and two for their flagship. The Mollusk Union scores one control point per comrade on the region's island, and one per union ship of any type. Whichever faction scores higher gains fame equal to the region's wealth die. Ties result in no rewards for either player. Before beginning a new round, players first check to see if anyone has reached or exceeded 30 fame. If so, the game ends and final scores are calculated. If the game isn't over, then players reroll their action dice and the first player card is passed to the next clockwise player. Okay, let's look at some of those actions. Matey? Using an action die on their turn, the player places it in an empty slot, each of which has a corresponding action. If the slot has a value, the die must match that value exactly. When placing, a player may spend any number of gold to modify the die's value. One die pip per gold. Note that a one cannot be rotated to a six with only one point. You gotta spend the five gold. There are four actions common to all players. Sail, Tailwind, Cannons, and Repair. Sail allows the player to move their flagship one or two spaces on the map. Movement is orthogonal, up, down, left, right, and ships cannot move across the sandbar separating two spaces. Tailwind allows the player to move their flagship directly to a space with a die symbol matching their activated die, no matter the distance. Cannons give all of a player's figures the loaded cannons condition until the end of the round. Whenever a figure moves into a space with enemy figures, they must battle if either has loaded cannons. Repair allows the player to remove up to two damage tokens from their die slots. When moving on the region map, at each space moved, the player must resolve any special conditions, exploration, battling, or special terrain. If they move off the map, they explore a new tile. When exploring, they draw a new region tile and place it so one space connects to their current location and the islands are not adjacent. They place a wealth die with the one value on the center of the tile. Their movement action ends, even if they only moved one space. Once all tiles are placed, the map cannot be explored further. Special terrain tiles include Strong Current which pushes the figure moved here one space adjacent for free. Fog, where battles cannot occur. And Wreckage, which inflicts one damage to a ship. Damage is tracked with damage tokens placed on the die slots of a player's board, usually chosen by that player, except in battle, thus limiting their die options for actions until repaired. The repair slot cannot be damaged. After resolving these conditions, the player's ship anchors, which resolves a few other terrain effects. Treasure icons give the player gold for anchoring in that space. If they're at a harbor when anchored, they may repair two damage. Or they may move one already placed die on their board to the cannon's die slot. Okay, battling. After moving into a space with enemy figures, first, if the active player has loaded cannons, they must battle every enemy figure in its space. If they do not, they must battle every enemy figure there that has loaded cannons. If no one has loaded cannons, it's chill, no battling. When battling, the active player is the attacker and must choose a figure as defender to resolve one at a time. They then follow these steps. The attacker fires cannons, turns their cannons died down any number of points. Then the defender does the same if they can. Both players then roll one battle die each. They add the result to the number of points they lowered their cannon die. Players compare totals and the higher score wins the battle. Attackers win ties. The victor may resolve one of the battle victory options on their board, unique to each faction. 
After battling, a figure's movement will end for that action. One other action to mention is Crew. This dieless action can only be taken while a player's flagship is at an island space and allows them to recruit any number of cards from the market row which match suits with the island. They pay the cost under the suit, either one or two gold, or of die placement, which counts as one of the two placements on a turn. Recruited crew go to the top of a player's board with its cargo section tucked under. Then refill the market row from the market deck. Some crew provide new actions or passive powers, and there's no limit to the amount of crew you can have. Okay, that's the major mechanics of the game, so let's get to the dessert of Ahoy's rules. The factions! First up, the Bluefin Squadron. Mm, delicious. They have patrols. When they use the sail or tailwind actions, they may place the patrol where they anchor. If they're damaged, patrols are removed instead of placing a damage token. The squadron also has strongholds which can be placed at the end of their turn on any island space by removing two patrols from that space. Strongholds are awesome because they always have loaded cannons regardless of the dice on the player board and add plus two to any battles. Additionally, they allow the player to recruit crew from the island as if their flagship were there and prevent enemy figures from recruiting. They also prevent smuggling and cargo delivery, which we'll learn about with the smuggler. They also have a few unique actions, including Bombard, which removes all comrades of the Mollusk Union from the island in the Bluefin's flagship's region. Order, which moves up to four patrols, each one space. And Deploy, which allows them to place a patrol on their flagship space or an adjacent space. The Mollusk Union. These Muscles and Misfits have Comrades, which can be in the player's supply, in the Ready Comrades section of their board, or on islands. When they're on islands, they provide control, and since they are tokens, not figures, they can't be battled. Comrades are placed with a variety of actions, including Sail, Rally, and Assemble. The Union also has Plans, Special cards with a timing for play and an effect. The Union starts with two plans in hand and draws two more at the end of each round, unless their deck is empty. The Union player is allowed to talk about their plan cards with other players, but they cannot show them until used, which allows them to lie about their options. Played plans are set in a personal discard, except the Cutter and Gunship plans, which are placed in the Union's play area. The Cutter and the Gunship have die slots that allow them to move, ignoring wreckage. The Gunship always have loaded cannons and adds three to its battle rolls. The Cutter may move up to three spaces on a movement, cannot load its cannons, and can double the control of all comrades on the island within its region. Unfortunately, damage to either of these ships cannot be repaired. If all its die slots are filled, its plan is discarded and the figure is removed. They also have a few unique actions, including Inspire, Assemble, and Rally, which allow them to place comrades in a variety of ways. The Smugglers! These scoundrels have two unique actions that do not require dice placement, smuggle and deliver. They may take these actions while their flagship is at an island. The smuggle action allows the player to take a card from the market matching the island's suit. They don't have to pay any costs on the card. They tuck it into the cargo slot on their board with the cargo section revealed and refill the market row from the deck. They can hold a max of two cargo, casting any excess into the sea. The deliver action may be taken at an island whose suit matches the cargo's deliver suit on the bottom right. When they do, they gain two fame, increase the wealth die in the region by one, and gain a reward from their player board by moving their white reward marker to an adjacent unoccupied space on their rewards grid, earning the reward listed. They then move their black reward marker to the space where the white marker formerly occupied. They can't gain the reward covered by the black cube until it moves again. 
Finally, they secretly pledge the cargo to one of the two factions, Squadron or Union, by keeping the cargo under the relevant face-down pledge marker. In the end game, for each cargo, they'll gain one fame for each region that the pledged faction controls whose island matches the cargo suit. They also have unique actions including Full Sail, which allows them to move their flagship a number of spaces up to their die result, and Negotiate, which allows them to recruit if their flagship is at an island, ignoring cost and suit requirements. They also can recruit an additional crew if they remove a comrade from the island. Note, in a two-player game, there are no smugglers to increase a region's wealth. So, between rounds, but before re-rolling the action dice, the first player must increase one region's wealth die by one pip. They may then choose to reset the market row by removing all current cards from the game and refilling it from the deck. Rounds continue with factions delivering cargo, seizing regions, and scoring fame. Once a round ends with one player at 30 or more fame, the game end is triggered. Smugglers score pledged cargo, and then the player with the most fame wins the game. If players tie, the player with the most gold wins. And that's the basics of Ahoy from Leader Games. I'm Becca Scott, this is Good Time Society, and you have been such an attentive little pirate. Well done. Give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, and come on back for more great games and good times.